Amy's words start to affect on Larry, yet in his mind, Larry thinks that Amy's advice was unnecessary and that he had always meant to do something. Larry's biggest flaws are his pride and his vanity, also his lack of ability to put himself to another person's position. And this is why his work process is slow and painful. Still at this point, Larry doesn't see women as individuals. He sees himself above them. In Vienna, he starts to compose an opera, which would harrow Joe's soul and melt her heart. Once again, it's all about him, but the opera doesn't go that well. He wants to capture his romantic passion, and all things that come to mind are Joe's oddities, faults and freaks. Quote, Recall Joe's oddities, faults and freaks would only show her in the most unsentimental aspects, beating mats with her head tied up in a bandana, barricading herself with the sofa pillow, or throwing cold water over his passion a la gumiche, and an irresistible laugh spoiled the pensive picture he was endeavoring to paint. Joe wouldn't be put into the opera at any price, and he had to give her up with a bless that girl, what a torment she is, and a clutch, at his hair, as became a distracted composer. The moment when Larry caught himself thinking the word brotherly, and Joe, it is almost like he sees himself as a character in an opera he is trying to compose. He immediately sends Joe a letter and proposes her again. Once again, it is all about him and not about Joe. Proposing someone right after they have lost their sister is not a good idea. When Joe's response arrives and she still says no, Laurie feels relieved. But instead of feeling bad for, for guilt tripping Joe for a very long time, he wants to cherish his memory as being a tragic, romantic hero. It is all about him. Why was Laurie so obsessed and why he never listened to what Joe had to say and why he felt guilty when he started to develop romantic feelings towards Amy, since we know that Joe never cared about him like that. As being said, there are no scenes in the books where Laurie is thinking Joe romantically or dreaming about a life with her. All his dreams are really about seeing himself as a romantic hero. Laurie feels guilty because his love for Joe is mainly gratitude. She invited him to be part of their family, something that Laurie was always missing. Thanks to the over-the-top ideas of masculinity he and Joe fed to each other, Larry didn't learn to respect women. It is easy to ignore the stories of the male characters in Little Woman because the four sisters are under a microscope. From the little that we know from Larry's background, it would seem that when he was a child, he was tossed from one boarding school to another and he did not have any stable parental figures or that he never spent enough time in one place to be able to establish such relationships. Quite early in the novel, Larry admits to Joe that he feels envious of the sister's bond to their mother. Larry's and Joe's relationship is characterized by childhood innocence. Joe represents the nurturing feminine presence Larry was craving to have in his life. At the same time, Larry is a paternal figure for Joe who complements her views on nonconformity. Joe and the March family became a refuge of stability to Larry. It is only when he moves to Concord at the age of 15 for the first time he is surrounded by people who stick long enough to put boundaries and try to raise him. More than often, Larry was frustrated by Joe's lectures, but at the same time he was depending on them. Little Woman is a semi-biographical novel. We can trace Larry's actions to Louisa, same way as Laurie, Louisa's childhood was unstable and turbulent, and the family moved very often. When Louisa was young, she had a big crush to the family friend and next-door neighbor, philosopher Walter Emerson. More than often, Emerson saved Alcott's from troubles, and he became a symbol of stability for Louisa, same way as Joe is for Laurie. Louisa became obsessed with German female writer and social activist Bettina von Armin and her book Goethe's Briefwäschel mit einem Kinde, Goethe's Correspondence with a Child, which included love letters Bettina wrote to the poet Goethe. Bettina represents herself as a lover, a role that is traditionally seen as more masculine. Bettina was in love with the idea of love, love as an emotion, not as a love relation. In her letters, she does not ask his opinions 
or share ideas with him. And this is something that Louis has written. I turned myself into Bettina and made Emerson my Goethe. Larry is not in love with Joe. He is in love with the idea of love. It is about putting up on a roll and a narcissistic one for that when it hurts other people, which is exactly what happened between Joe and Laurie and Bettina and Goethe. Let's call Laurie's behavior with its actual name, harassment. When Louisa was an adult, she did tell Emerson how she had built this romantic fairy tale scenario in her head. Emerson himself had been completely unaware of it. Nevertheless, they had a very strong friendship throughout their lives. There is the famous little woman passage to adulthood ritual. It basically means that a reader who has read this book as a child and romanticized Joe and Laurie and quite possibly watched the 1994 film more than once reads the book as an adult and finds out that Laurie was very childish and he and Joe were very ill-matched and they move on to read Joe and Frederick and Amy and Laurie or both. We can also see it as a metaphor how a person develops a mildly delusional obsession over another. Especially young people often think that their life only has a meaning when they find a partner whose only reason for existing is them, but it is not healthy and not love. When you truly love someone, you love them for what they truly are, not the way you want to see yourself with them. In Little Woman, Larry himself is the one character who goes through the Little Woman adulthood ritual. It is not until he goes through the process of self-growth and begins to see the woman in his life as what they really are, he is truly able to love someone. Friedrich's proposal is completely different. Joe, I have nothing but much love to give you. I came to see if you could care for it, and I waited to be sure that I was something more than a friend. Am I? Can you make a little place in your heart for old Fritz? He wants to tell her how he feels about her and let her decide. After Joe has left New York, they have been writing letters to each other, and when he comes to see Joe in Concord, he hopes to see signs of love from Joe. And when he reveals to her that he has gotten a job and that he is going to the West, Joe's walls go down. He gives Joe all the power and control, and he lets her know that everything what she feels and thinks is important for him. And he wants to make sure that she returns to his feelings and that their lives and goals work together. He's not even making a marriage proposal. He is asking if she could love him. In comparison to Laurie, Friedrich's screen portrayals are always closer to the books, even if most of his parts are left out because he is less romanticized character. He also acknowledges his flaws same way as Joe does. In terms of Friedrich's narrative, Little Woman is also about identity, but in his case it is not about forming identity, but when he falls in love with Joe, he reshapes his already existing identity. Luisa was a great admirer of German writer and poet Goethe. A lot of research has been made on Goethe's influence on Luisa's writings. For example, Long Fatal Love Chase has many parallels with Goethe's Faust, but less research has been done between Goethe's writings and Little Woman. Goethe was one of Louise's favorite authors, and she credited him to be the one author who has taught me the most about creating and understanding characters. Louise's copy of Wilhelm Meister's Apprenticeship was given to her by Walter Emerson, and Louisa filled it with scribbles and personal observations. In Little Woman, Friedrich gives Joe a copy of Shakespeare's work, and through that, Joe learns how much more there is to find about storytelling. Friedrich also encourages Joe to study people around her so that she becomes better at developing and creating characters. Goethe was one of the biggest inspirations for Friedrich's character. Trigger warning, there will be mentions of suicides. When it comes to Laurie's character arc, there are lots of themes that come straight from Goethe's writings. Goethe's first financially successful novel, and first German international bestseller, The Sorrows of Young Werther, is a semi-biographical novel. Both protagonists, Young Werther and Goethe himself, grew up privileged, same way as Laurie. Werther's love interest, Charlotte, is marrying another worthy man, Albert. Werther makes Charlotte the only sole purpose of his living. He is not only miserable, he is proud of his misery. In fact, he endorses it. 
as a result he commits a suicide. But Kisworth is not being disappointed in love. It has nothing to do with Charlotte. What kills him is the toxic self-centeredness. What is common with Werther and Laurie is that they are both extremely sensitive. Same way as Little Woman, the sorrows of young Werther has often been misread. Some readers endorsed and glamorized Werther's suicide, and when the book became vastly popular, it started a wave of suicides of young people in Germany who tried to emulate the tragic end of their romantic hero. It's a quote from Edna Cheney's Louisa May Alcott biography. The children took a special interest in the love story, and when Paul Larry was so abstinently refused by Joe, they wept aloud and refused to be comforted, and in some instances were actually made ill by grief and excitement. References to Goethe continue in Larry's proposal. After being rejected, Larry threatens to take his life and puts enormous pressure on Joe. Same way as the source of young Werther, a great deal of little woman fans, especially younger ones, find these wearing threats passionate and romantic. Yet this book was widely misunderstood since he meant it as a criticism and warning example towards life-consuming self-absorption. Here's a quote from Maddie Rodriguez. Larry isn't a good guy, he's a nice guy. When I reread the novel in my early 20s, I still technically thought Joe should have ended up with Laurie, but I started to feel uncomfortable about feeling that way. Wasn't it weird? I thought to feel that way when the character of Joe so explicitly rejected his proposal. Wasn't it a bit like telling a dear friend she should date someone she wasn't crazy about just because he had feelings for her and is such, quote, a good guy? I dismissed this too because a dead of the author, non-canonical parents are okay, etc. And B, I have a moderate grasp on reality, and I do recognize Joe is a fictional character, not my friend. But rereading Little Woman this month, I realized with mounting alarm that as a potential romantic partner for Joe, Laurie isn't a good guy. He is, in fact, a nice guy. The story of Laurie and Joe is not, as I had previously remembered, one of Joe seeming like she loves Laurie and making an out-of-a-left-field decision. It is very much in the field. Joe consistently indicates that she does not have feelings for Laurie, does not want him to flirt with her, and tries to prevent him from doing so every time he flirts with her. And he ignores her again and again. But wait, there's more. When Joe realizes that her very consistent attempts to communicate her disinterest are not working, she decides to move to New York for adventure and also get away from Laurie. There may be some who would accuse me of selective reading. After all, Laurie isn't a terrible person, to which I say yes. But all of this can be true, and Laurie simultaneously still be a terrible potential partner for Joe. What I realized... Rereading Little Woman as a grown-ass adult is this. Making Joe and Laurie perfect for each other wouldn't just require a different ending, it would require an entirely different book. So it's been over 20 years in the making, but better late than never. Louisa May Alcott, I'm sorry, you were right. Thank you for listening. To listen to the full episode, Why Joe Rejected Laurie, link can be found from the description. You can listen to Little Woman Podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio and other major podcast platforms. Take care and make good choices. Bye!